Hello everyone and welcome back to my 75 gallon reef aquarium build series. The reason for this video is I wanted to talk about my very first purchase that I made and that was this RO system. Uh, I purchased the RO system I believe from Dr. Foster and Smith online. It's a Coral Life Pure Flow 2. It does about 50 gallons per day and I decided I was going to permanently mount it here on the wall because I have the room for it rather than storing it and pulling it out when I, whenever I needed it. I was a little intimidated by purchasing an RO system because it required some light plumbing but once I got it I realized it was really really simple and there's really nothing to be intimidated about it. Um, the simple concept is you put water in, it filters and the purified water comes out and wastewater uh, is deposited down the drain of your sink. The way I hooked mine up, I decided to go with hooking it up to the washing machine cold water faucet. Um, that's the hot water here. This is the cold water. And all I did is went down to Orchard Supplies, purchased myself this little uh, T. I put Teflon tape on all the threads. The T came with uh, ball valves on each end, so the water going into the washing machine is always on while the water for the RO system I keep off unless I'm using it. The tubing goes from the faucet and right into the RO system. This is a uh, four stage RO system with uh, four different filters including the membrane. And then what happens from here is the water filters through um, and it comes out in two different forms. You have your blue line, which is your purified water, your product water. That's the water that's going to go in your receptacle. And then you have your black line, and that goes into either the down your drain. Um, if you're close to an outside area, you can leave the hose outside and a drain outside. Or you can do what I did here, and I just permanently fixed it by drilling a little hole underneath the sink and uh, inserting the, the wastewater line there. I did do a couple modifications here. Um, I put a TDS monitor. There's basically two different types of TDS monitors. One monitor will read the water coming in, give you the total dissolvable solids coming in, and then the second reading will give you total dissolvable solids coming out. I went with just the unit that gives total dissolvable units coming out. Um, it's a little less pricier. Um, and really, your reading from your tap water uh, is not going to change so you're going to get that one reading and it's pretty much going to be the same all the time. All I really cared about is that I'm getting zero TDS on the way out. I also bought a pressure gauge. The reason I got the pressure gauge was because uh, by visually looking at your filters it's going to be a little difficult to determine when they're ready to be changed out. I've only done two 35 gallon garbage cans for my uh, product water and already this bucket's turning brown so eventually the whole thing's going to turn brown but it's going to be very difficult to determine when to change them out so um, I bought this pressure gauge when the unit was is, uh, well it is still brand new um, and that way I know how much pressure is going through this system when the filters are clean and right now I'm getting about 85 psi so when it starts dropping from there, I know that the filters are starting to get dirty and once it gets around 45 or 40 or 45 PSI, I know it's time to change out the system. The other thing I did to the unit in terms of modifying it is I put these um, auto shutoff uh, system on. And I call it a system because there's three key parts to the system. One is obviously this float valve. Uh, when the water reaches the float valve, the float valve will be pushed up and shut off the water coming in and that's going to build a lot of pressure so what you have to do is you have to also place this check valve and this auto shut off valve so that it ensures that the system completely turns off. Um, right now you see the water moving like that that's not because water is going into it, it's because I have a pretty powerful uh, Rio pump in there um, I originally purchased 600 or uh, Eheim 600 pumps for 
moving around the water in both of my receptacles, but I found that the water was staying cloudy after I added salt because the pumps were not strong enough to circulate the water. So I went out and upgraded the pump to uh, a Rio, I think it's a 2500. So it's really pushing the water, it clears up the water really, really quick. And uh, that's what we want. We don't want no cloudy water going into our aquarium. I have um, one receptacle that's going to be for fresh. And then one receptacle that's going to be for salt. Right now this receptacle here, I have um, Reef Saver Rock that I'm quote unquote 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 curing. Um, Reef Saver Rock is really comes with no hitchhikers on there. There's no... Um, dying organisms. Uh, I've had this in there for about three weeks and or maybe even four weeks and my uh, water is running clean. There's no impurities in this water so I never had to change it out. The other thing I wanted to talk about when storing water is these containers that you're actually putting the water in. Some of these containers, if you buy the wrong ones, will actually leach uh, chemicals into your water because of the coloring of the container or whatever the container is made out of. Once you put the water in and start storing it, uh, the container will actually leach chemicals into your water which will make the whole process um, counterproductive because you're trying to put pure water in there and what you're essentially doing if you have the wrong container is actually contaminizing your pure water once it gets into the wrong container. So Brute makes these gray containers and the colors of the containers actually do make a difference. Uh, these are, I know, are the safe containers to put water in. There's probably others. I think Brute makes several different colors and um, there's three colors that are, are safe. I don't want to start guessing. But I'm going to tell you that Brute gray containers are safe. And I'm only speaking for this brand. If you buy another brand that's gray, I, I don't know if it's going to be safe or not. So just stick with what's safe. For me, it was this container here. And this is obviously not the only safe container. There's more. The reason I decided to go RO was because it's really the only option for me. I used to have a 50-gallon and a nano tank in the past and it was just a real big pain in the butt to go to the aquarium store, fill up these five gallon jugs of water and haul them back and forth. It, it got to be a real pain in the butt and once that starts happening, you start losing interest in the hobby. So that was the biggest pain in the butt for me was actually going back and forth to the store to get uh, fresh water and salt water from them. So I purchased my own RO system. I'm really excited about it. Um, my wife, uh, was with me when I had the nano tank and we couldn't get that thing going at all. It had algae blooms and stuff and she would name the fish and shortly after naming them they would die off so we'd have this big funeral service in the bathroom and it was just all bad but hopefully now that I have more knowledge on how to treat the water and uh, more knowledge about the hobby hopefully I'll be able to at least control or if not completely avoid any kind of algae blooms with this new system. So that's about it for this video. Just wanted to share with you um, as a new beginner to the hobby uh, my very first purchase was an RO system. I would really highly recommend it for any of you who are gonna get into the hobby. You could expect to pay about 200 bucks for um, the system and it's well worth the money and it'll pay itself off in the long run. Please leave me any comments, um, any feedback, I really appreciate it and so would any other beginners out there who are going to be watching these videos. Thanks again.